This video is going to help you understand some practical applications of the if statement. I like using timesheet as an example because it involves a lot of concepts together. Just to recap for a brief moment though, Excel considers dates as a special kind of number. Essentially, if I type in a number like 1, 2, or 3, I can show it as a regular number, as a percentage, as a dollar, all the different formats, or I can show it as a date. Inside of Excel, it's actually going to look at this value as the number of days that have occurred since January 1st, 1900. So day one is January 1st, day two is January 2nd, day three is January 3rd. And if I go to January 1st, 2020, you'll see that it is actually the number 43,831. So this is a key idea. Excel uses dates as a way, or Excel uses dates as a special formatting option for numbers. Now when we get to time, Excel is still going to think in terms of days. Let me go ahead and clear out the values I have here and we'll talk about what that means. What that means is that if I've got one full day, one, I could also think of half a day, 0.5, or a quarter of a day, 0.25. So this is a full day, a half day, or a quarter day. Now I can look at these as regular numbers like this, or I can format them a little bit differently. I can say format as time. And now you see this is midnight or a full day. This is noon or a half day. And this is 6 a.m. or a quarter day. Essentially, you need to think of dates and times as just the same thing. Excel looks at them as just a simple number. But to get times, we're going to do fractions of a day. So as another example, imagine you have 6 p.m. 6 p.m. is going to be equal to 2 th to 3 fourths of a day. So 3 fourths of a day is 0.75. If I take 0.75 and convert it into time, you'll see it shows as 6 p.m. What this means is that we can use simple arithmetic to convert times and dates back and forth. Let's see an example here. Let's say I have a time card. I'm going to start working at 8 a.m. and finish at 9 a.m. So it's one hour or 1 24th of a day because there's 24 hours in a day. Let's do a simple math problem to find out what fraction of a day I worked. I'm going to take the bigger number, 9 a.m., and take away the smaller number, 8 a.m. So again, remember, this is just fractions of a day. Now, it automatically gives me a time, a.m., but I really want to think of it as a number, so I'm going to turn it back into a number format. So I see that this is just 0 0.04, or 1 24th of a day. If I copy that formula all the way to the right, you'll see I have values for all of these. Tuesday, so from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., 6 a.m. is a quarter of a day, 12 p.m., or noon, is half of day. So half minus a quarter equals a quarter, and so forth. So this shows me the difference in terms of fractions of a day. Now, for payment though, I don't really work off of days, I wanna work off of hours. All I have to do to convert this into hours is multiply by 24. In other words, if I have 0.04 of a day, all I do is do that, multiply by the number of hours in a day. This is just like the same in any unit conversion problem that you might have done in your basic math training. Everything from changing quarts into gallons or miles into feet, right? All you have to do is just do a multiplication or division problem. So now I have this 0.04 of a day is equivalent to one hour. I can copy it to the right. And now I see in this sample here, I have a quarter of a day from here to here, 0.25, and I multiply that by 24 and it comes out to six or six hours. So now that I have the basic number of hours tracked, I'm going to go ahead and start playing with the actual calculations. How many regular hours did I actually work? Well, in most places we look at, we'll see that you start getting paid overtime after you go over eight hours of work. So essentially we're going to do a formula. We're going to do a simple test. Did I work more than eight hours? So if I worked more than eight hours, I want to only have eight hours. In other words, don't go over the max. If I didn't, then just give me the number of hours I actually did work. Now you can write this more than one way. 
you could write this using a min function as well, but we're using if, so let's kind of leave it as is for right now. So this is going to put a cap on my number of days, the number of hours worked. And I'll copy that to the right as well. So I see I've got one hour here, I've got six hours here, but on Wednesday when I worked an extra hour, now I'm going to have one hour of overtime. So I do, instead of nine hours of actually worked, I'm going to do only eight hours of regular time. Now we also can think about, well, what if I have a lunch hour? If I have a lunch hour, that could affect it as well. So let's say maybe if you work over six hours, then you have to take a lunch. Well, again, that's just a simple if statement. If the number of hours I worked is greater than, say, six, depending upon where you live, then I need to actually take away an hour of pay because I'm not going to pay them for a lunch hour. Otherwise, they didn't take a lunch and so give a zero. And again, this sort of depends on what your rules for your business are, but it works for our example here. Now when I copy it over, I can say this one worked exactly six hours, so they didn't get a lunch hour because I did greater than, not greater than or equal to. And over here, I did work more than that time, so now it's going to take away an hour of pay because I'm not going to get paid for my lunch hour. Now let's think about overtime. For my overtime calculation, I want to take a look at the number of hours worked and compare that to the regular hours. Basically, if I worked more than the regular hours, that everything left over is going to be overtime. We can do this in multiple ways, but probably an easy way of doing it is just a simple subtraction problem. Take the number of hours you worked and subtract your regular hours from it, and then you can copy that over. So now I see for my first example on Monday, I worked for one hour. It's a regular hour. There's no lunch and no overtime. For Tuesday, I worked six hours. Again, no lunch, no overtime. For Wednesday, things are a little bit different. I worked eight hours of normal time. I did have a lunch hour though, and now I have some overtime. And again, we could kind of play along with the other ones as well. Now I actually do the calculation. Now I want you to start playing with this because you can see some examples and some issues to play with. Say for example, you wanted to try it to have Tuesday be anything greater than or equal to six hours. Give me a lunch hour. See if you can modify the formula to make that work. You also can see some problems elsewhere too, like on Friday. On Friday, I worked from 11 p.m. until 1 a.m. the next day, which is a little bit tricky for this. Same thing for Sunday. I started at 6 p.m. in the evening and didn't finish until 6 a.m. the following morning. And if you look at the actual numbers behind here, you'll see that the problem is that Friday is 0.96 and the time out is the next day 0.04. In other words, I have two hours of time here, but one hour occurred on the first day, one hour occurred on the second day. Think about how you can change these to make that work. For example, I'm going to change back the display here. Imagine this problem right here. If this number is actually smaller than this number, you need to treat it a little bit differently. An easy way of dealing with that is just adding one. So try doing an if condition that says if the blue value is greater than one is less sorry if the blue value is smaller than the red value then add one to the blue value and then do the subtraction problem so try playing with that and see if that gets you a little bit further in trying to solve out some basic timesheet you might also think about how to use absolute references as well in the total pay column we're going to want to do some math here you're going to want to use the hourly pay idea to figure it out. So try to figure out a function to make this work where you can copy it all the way across and still have it work properly. There's some other tweaks you can make to this as well to kind of make it a little bit nicer, but it's a good place to start to try and practice out how to build out a basic timesheet.